Welcome, everyone. I, I'm real glad to be here in North Carolina. That's how you say it. <laughs> and I think you've had a bit of rain lately. But that's over to the west. And we certainly pray for what's happening over there. And we are glad that it's uh, dried up a little bit here. But I'd like to welcome you tonight because I'm sure all of you are here because you're interested in knowing how to give your body the best conditions, not only for maintenance, but if the body's not working well, also for healing. Because I believe that the human body was designed to heal itself. And it will heal itself if you give it the right conditions. And many people are today are sick through ignorance. They're not the basic conditions that the body requires for healing. I know that if I get uh, bronchitis and on, I realised that I had a dairy intolerance, and it wasn't talked about much back then but I realize now that that was my problem so I got bronchitis a couple of times a year mum would take me the doctor would give me cherry flavored medicine which I know now was a bottle of antibiotics I would take it a couple of times a day and in a week I'd be better do you know why I now realize that if I'd done nothing I'd because we live in a body that's got inbuilt ability to heal itself, but it must have conditions. And so, what are those conditions? Okay, looks like I've got a hand held. I'll just pull that aside. Yeah, you can take it off. Tristan's like one of my sons, he's my American son. So he's allowed to take my microphone off. Yeah, and here's my, okay. And you know the best laid plans of mice and man are known to go astray. <laughs> Beauty, mate, thanks. All good. I just thank God that we not only have a, a, a body that can adapt and adjust, we have a brain that can adapt and adjust. And I'm so glad that the little book Ministry of Healing is available here because that was one of my first health books. And in page 127 of the Ministry of Healing, the writer says, the only hope of better things is the education of people in the right principles. Because I'd like to suggest that most of us were brought up the way I was brought up, that when you go sick, you go to the doctor, he gives you a drug, and you get better. Is that, am I right? But a lot of people are starting to question that, especially what happened in 2020. Especially now, a few years later, when we're looking back and we're realising that 59 people didn't die. And I think a lot of people are realising that you can't really believe what the media says. And he, yeah. Otherwise you wouldn't be here because they reckon I'm a threat to public safety. <laughs> so I'm just warning you. <laughs> God's government is a government of freedom. And freedom is based on free choice. And I am the master of my destiny. I am the one that chooses what I do and what I do not do to my body. And every parent is the master, the God-given master or mistress of their children. And don't let anyone take that right away from you. And whenever a mandate comes in that you got to do this, it's time to stand. Yep. So in 2021, or 2020 actually, in 2020 when it was illegal 
to protest in Australia, my husband held one every two weeks. <laughs> and the first time he held it, there were 500 people and there were about 300 police and they came up to Michael and said, oh, excuse me, sir, but if you speak, we'll arrest you. And Michael said, that'll be interesting. <laughs> and he stood up immediately and spoke. And they came up and they said, sir, you've got to stop. And he said, look, excuse me, I've not finished yet. <laughs> and they grabbed him. And as they're walking away, he realised that they they weren't holding him very tightly, so he told me later he decided to have a bit of fun and he ran. <laughs> and they couldn't catch him. <laughs> because even though this is a white-haired man, he's tall and slim, and he, we run up and down mountains every day. Do you know it's time for the soldiers of God to get fit? Mm. We've got to get into training. And they couldn't catch him. Because they've got all these things on their belts, which I think makes it a bit heavy. Anyway, the whole crowd was whistling and cheering, and I think Michael was quite enjoying it. <laughs> And they were taking video clips and photos. And finally, he thought, I better let them catch me. <laughs> and they jumped on him. And one man, one young man, is pulling his wrist back. And it was hurting. And Michael said, don't be so disrespectful. I'm an elderly gentleman. Stop hurting me. <laughs> and the young man said, you shouldn't have run. Michael said, it's my right. Anyway, they decided not to arrest him. <laughs> they decided to just charge him. So they took him to a table and there was a policeman there to take his particulars and this huge big guy came up with a beard and tattoos all over him and he said, are they hurting you? And Michael said, I'm okay, mate. He was a biker. He was Samoan, he was big. And he said to the policeman, you heard him and you answer to us. And the policeman went, yeah, righto. <laughs> And, and this guy said, we're just over there, and there are about 30 of them, big guys. <laughs> and there are their bikes. <laughs> I call them God's angels. <laughs> Never underestimate the way God can work in your life in so many ways. But we need to do our part. We need to look after this body and we need to be ready because we don't know what's around the corner. And when people say to me, Barbara, how do you do this? You're in a different place every week. I say, I found a formula. And if you abide by that formula, which we'll be going through the next few days, the body works. And that's what I'm interested in. And I have discovered that if you give the body the right conditions, It'll, it'll maintain you very well. You look after it, it'll look after you. And I have also discovered that if you're not well, these basic conditions can bring about a healing situation in the body. Two weeks later, Michael held his next protest. There were hardly any police there and they all stood back. Because that night, that video clip went up on the, on the nightly news. 23 chromosomes from our father, and there's a huge, of, a huge amount of information in this DNA. And the DNA is made up of the food we eat. It's made up of polysaccharides. What are polysaccharides? Uh, many sugars made up of amino acids. Amino acids is a breakdown from the protein that we eat. And everything is glued together with minerals. And minerals comes from mostly our vegetables, especially our dark green leafy vegetables. Hippocrates, father of medicine, 400 years BC, he said, let food be your medicine and medicine be your food. And he didn't know the intricacies of what I've just shown you here. And when I look in some supermarket trolleys, I think, how will their DNA ever be made? 
the food that they're eating does not contain the nutrients necessary even for their DNA to, to function efficiently. We're constantly being remade according to the pattern, according to the formula that's written in the DNA. It's like the plan, the, the plans on how the new cell is made, the blueprint. We're constantly being remade. We've got new eye cells every one to two days. That's why if you have eye surgery, it heals very quickly. We've got uh, new cells lining our gastrointestinal tract every three to five days. We've got new skin every month. We've got a new liver under our right rib every six weeks. And that liver is an, in an incredible organ. It's a recoverable organ. Uh, new bones every three months. We're constantly being remade according to the pattern and according to the formula. And so then the question arises, well, if we're constantly being remade, why aren't we better? Let's choose one, one condition called uh, irritable bowel syndrome, which is a, in fact, I just got a message recently from a lady that said her friend's 10-year-old daughter has been diagnosed with irritable bowel uh, Crohn's disease and told that she'll be on medication for the rest of her life. Put not your trust in princes, neither in the Son of Man in whom there's no help. There's no help there. But we live in a body that's got an inbuilt ability to heal itself. And the cells that line the gut are, re are remade every three to five days. Well, in my book, Sustain Me, I've got a chapter on the colon. And I've got a section on irritable bowel, Crohn's disease, colitis. And I show all the things that you can do to get healing. Because we've seen people totally heal from that. Isn't that good news? Very good news. Very good news. But it, it, it needs faith. My eldest daughter, Emma, she's got her shop there. When she was five, she said, Mum, I'm going to grow up in a minute. Now, it took another 10 years before she actually grew up. And when we're sick, we want to be better in a minute, am I right? But it takes a little bit of time, doesn't it? <laughs> and that's where faith is required. In Hebrews 11, verse 1, the Bible says, Faith is the substance of things hoped for. It's the evidence of things not seen. If you can see it, it's not faith. And that's what natural healing requires. The fact is, we didn't get sick overnight. Sometimes it takes 20 or 30 years before finally the body begins to protest. But the good news is it won't take 20 or 30 years to get better. But it might take a few months. That's where faith comes into it. So what I'd like to show you is how the new cell is made. A photocopy is made, it's called RNA, because DNA cannot leave. So a photocopy is made, it's called RNA. An RNA comes down to the little factory in the cell, it's called ribosome. And ribosome is the little factory where the new cell is made. And I'm going to explain it like the building of a brick wall. So the first brick goes down. Maybe it's uh, phenylalanine. Next brick goes down. Maybe it's methionine. Next brick goes down. Maybe it's lysine. Next brick goes down. Maybe it's uh, tyrosine. Can you see what's happening here? Every amino acid is a different shape and it fits into the next one like pieces in a jigsaw according to the pattern, according to the formula. And let's say we're making a new um, gastrointestinal tract cell and every three to five days out pops a new gastrointestinal tract cell. Well, if someone's got irritable bowel, how, they, how come they're not healed in say two weeks, is that a reasonable question? Especially if those cells are remade every three to five days? Well, let me show you something. 
Let's have a look at how the, gastro the, the gastrointestinal tract cell that's irritated, like in Crohn's disease, colitis, irritable bowel, Crohn's disease, gastritis. Let's look at how that's made. The first brick goes down, maybe methionine is there, and then we're ready for the next brick, but we've got a problem. There's a piece of information missing. What goes in there? The, there's, there's a glitch in the formula. And there's a rogue cell. What's the rogue cell? The rogue cell is a breakdown from chemicals, poisons, and I think you'll agree with me, we're awash with them. And as we go through these classes, you might be surprised at some of the places we're being exposed to chemicals. You have no say over the neighbour, but you have total say over your house. It's time to do a cleanse of the laundry cupboard. It's time to do a cleanse of what's under your kitchen sink. Do you know what's under my laundry cupboard? White vinegar, sodium bicarbonate, bottle of eucalyptus oil, and biodegradable washing detergent. That's it. You'll save a fortune once you get rid of all of that stuff. And start having a good look at what's in your personal care products. People say, Barbara, what, what moisturiser do you use? I say, nothing. <laughs> but do you know what I do? I eat olive oil, I eat at least a teaspoon every meal. Your skin is an illustration of how you're eating. And when we look at the heart tomorrow night, you're going to see that fat doesn't cause heart disease and this fat phobia that's been plaguing the planet for the last 40 years is actually a myth. Put not your trust in princes. Hmm? They often get it wrong. And if you notice, they don't say, ah, sorry, we've got it wrong. They don't say that, have you noticed? You know what they say? Ah, new research reveals. Ah. <laughs> anyway, we'll hold back on that because we're going to look at that tomorrow night. And in my second lecture tomorrow night on hormones, guess what our sex hormones are made from? Cholesterol. And if you don't have enough cholesterol, guess what's going to happen? Your sex hormones can't be made properly. Just a preview. <laughs> Just a preview of tomorrow. Let's get back to our irritable bowel syndrome cell. <laughs> so we had a piece of information missing. A rogue cell came along. It didn't fit anyway, but it, it tries its hardest to get in there because there's a gap. And now we're up to um, tyrosine. Where does it fit? It hasn't got its usually usual docking station but it does the best it can. And then we're time for uh, lysine. Oh no, the person's lacking an amino acid. Why are they lacking amino acids? Because they're eating all day long. Oh, here's another myth. Eating every two hours. Do you know what the most popular way of eating that they say is the best today? Time-restricted eating. Do you know what time-restricted eating is? Eating twice six hours apart in 24 hours. What happened to the eating every two hours? And notice they don't say, ah, oh, sorry, we got it wrong. They'll never say that. What do they say? Oh, new, new research is revealing. Do you know, the body hasn't changed. Do you know, when I was a kid and I was hungry in the afternoon, you know what I was told? Wait for dinner. Hey, eh? we ate at meal times. Well, actually, they're going back to that now. Another illustration to prove don't put your trust in princes. A lady came to our re retreat with a whole pile of tests, and she said to my husband, look at my tests. He said, oh, I don't believe that. She said, but Michael, these are the blood tests. He said, yeah, but they're often wrong, you know. She just looked at him shocked. Do you ever think that? It's possible. It's possible. 
Psalm 146 verse 3 says, Put not your trust in princes, neither in the son of man in whom there is no help. But you know what verse 5 says? Happy is he that hath the God of Jacob as his help, whose hope is in the Lord his God that made heaven, earth, sea, and all that in them in, that includes us, and keeps truth forever. That's what I'm interested in is truth. And you know, the Bible says you can do nothing against the truth. You can only only for the truth. So it will come through, though sometimes one wonders, I agree, and I think we all wondered in 2020, when will this end? I think a lot of people have woken up since that time. People used to say to me, Barbara, how can I protect myself against COVID in 2021, 2022? I said, it's real easy, stop watching the news. That certainly is a prince you can't believe. <laughs> so let's come back to our sad, irritable bowel syndrome cell. <laughs> We're missing amino acids because the person's hydrochloric acid is so exhausted because they're eating every two hours because that's what the prince has said. They're stressed with their meals because things aren't working. They're eat, drinking too much water with their meal. It washes all the hydrochloric acid away. And so the protein's not getting broken down properly. And even if they might be eating properly, it's all ending up in the, in the toilet, but not in their bodies. And there's a, another rogue cell. There's a few of them around. It's trying to find somewhere to poke itself and every three to five days out pops a new irritable bowel syndrome cell. Eesh. Can you see that it's not just one thing? It can be damage in the message, in the DNA. It can be uh, lack of amino acid. It can be exposure to the environmental poisons. Do you know a we can have a strong rope and a strong man cannot break that rope, but a little mouse can come along and start nibbling thread by thread by thread. And the strong rope that the strong man could not break, that strong man who could just stomp on that mouse and kill it in a second, that little tiny mouse can break that rope. And that often is what's happening when people get sick. It's not just one thing. And that's why it's often hard to put your finger on it. That's why the first thing we do, if we're not well, is we've got to look at the history. Because Newton's, four, Newton's third law of motion states that to every action there's an equal and an opposite reaction. In other words, there is always a cause. And if any of the princes say to you, oh, it's just you, you've got every right to say, excuse me, but that's very unscientific. That's like there's a water leak and you think, oh, it's just the roof. And then you just paint over it and then every three weeks you paint over it again and then eventually you wonder why the roof falls in. That's why you look at your history because there's no one like you. That's why I believe we all should be our own doctor. We, it's our God-given right, what we do and what we do not do to our body. But when God says, I've not given you the spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind, you know what a sound mind does? It investigates. Power, what's power? Knowledge is power. To be able to make a decision, we need information. If you're going to put a new air conditioner in your house, don't you investigate? Don't you find out who's selling it? Don't you find out the reports? Don't you investigate? How much more important this living machinery? And today with Google, if you're told you've got to go on that drug, go home and Google it and have a good list, have a good look at the side effects. Ooh. And then pick up Sustain Me and have a look in the back and find out what you can do to
to work with those healing powers that God put into their body to bring about healing. What I'd like to look at now is what's causing this damage. What's causing the damage in the DNA? Because you can see that that's one of the causes of why people get sick is its damage in the DNA. So let's have a look at the reasons for damage in the DNA. Because there's always a reason. Rudyard Kipling, very famous poet, he wrote a whole poem on it. He said, I have six trusty serving men. They taught me all I know. Their names are what, why, when, where, how, and who. Do you take them with you everywhere you go? And if your health professional, if your prince, gets annoyed at your questions, arise, politely excuse yourself, leave and don't pay the bill. We the consumer have power. So what causes this damage? The research is showing that 92% of DNA damage is caused by a mineral deficiency. How could we, ha how could we be mineral deficient? Do you know, one of the things I like about the southern states of America is all your greens. You have collard greens, yeah? Lamb's quarters, we don't have them. I thought lamb's quarters was a part of a lamb, but it's a green, isn't it? And if people say to me, Barbara, what are we going to feed you? I say, it's real easy, greens and beans. I love greens and beans. Why am I mentioning these greens? Because green leafy vegetables are the highest source of minerals. So we should be having them every day. And when you cook your greens, you do not lose your minerals. You only lose it if you throw the water away. But one of the problems today is the soil. Dr. Matthew Walker in his book no, sorry, Dr. Robert Thompson. Dr. Robert Thompson in his book, The Calcium Lie, he shows the figures. He shows that 50 years ago, there was twice as many minerals in the soil as they're in today. Why? There's always a reason. Well, unfortunately, often the same crop is grown in the same soil again and again and again. <coughs> and between crops, the soil's not fed. So I'm a gardener. When everything locked down in 2020, I became the gardener. I had a lot of fun that year. And in the garden, in the vegetable garden, if I grew tomatoes, I know that for that tomato to grow and to produce those beautiful tomatoes, where has it got the nutrients from? The soil. And so when that crop has finished, I must feed that soil. I must replace the soil because the tomato took so much out of it. How do I replace it? Compost. Compost is how you replace it. And then the next crop I put in is not tomato, it's carrots or beetroot. I alternate a top crop and a root crop, but I always feed the soil. Unfortunately today, a lot of farmers, especially big scale, they're doing the same crop every year, and they're not, and they're not feeding the soil, and so the food is mineral deficient. And when the, when the soil's deficient, the, the vegetables and the fruits are deficient, and the people that eat that food are deficient. Have you ever eaten an apple off the tree? Very good. You know what you're tasting? Minerals. <laughs> so a lot of the fruits and vegetables don't have the flavour today because they don't have the minerals. And so then the person puts all this uh, chemical MSGs and flavourings in to try and make it taste nice, further causing deficiencies. And that's why organically grown fruits and vegetables are so important. 
It's like Tristan's simple need bread there. Some people complain about the price. As you do know, every flower in that bread is organic and that costs a bit more. <laughs> But one slice of his bread is almost equal in nutrient value to a whole loaf of many of the breads that you buy in the supermarket. I, I'm fussy as to where my, my dollar goes. I want my dollar to go to local industries. That's where I want my dollar to go. So not only is it because of the way our food is grown, but stimulants. Stimulants effectively leach minerals out. Why? Especially calcium and magnesium because they're, they're the alkaline minerals. And sugar, refined sugar has a very, it's a pure acid actually. Refined sugar is so acid that when it goes into the body, the bones release minerals to try and calm it down. In fact, one writer said sugar leaves the, the body better dressed than when it went in. How did it go in? Uh, went in naked, no minerals. I'm not talking about sugar cane, but if you've ever eaten sugar cane, it takes you about half an hour to eat two inches. Did you know it takes a metre of sugar cane to deliver one teaspoon of refined sugar? Did you know that in a can of Coca-Cola there are 10 teaspoons of sugar? That's 10 metres of sugar cane. Could you eat 10 metres of sugar cane? No, your jaw would break. <laughs> Can you see the message from God? <laughs> this, this, this is a pure crystallised acid and it leaches the minerals out of the body. That's one reason why so many young children are having tooth decay now. The sugar leaches the minerals from the inside, weakening the teeth, and then the sugar on the outside coming in the sodas, the, the candy bars, the cookies, all of this, that sugar feeds the microorganisms that effectively can start breaking down that, that dentine. I, I raised my children in a rainforest and everything they eight I made. I made dessert about three times a week and they could have it when they'd eaten all their veggies. I'd make it with uh, honey or maple syrup or dried fruits and I thought I'd better take them to the dentist. I'd never been to the dentist so I think the eldest was about 15 and the youngest was about four, six children and the dentist looked at their teeth. It only took her about 20 minutes to look at them all. She said, your children's teeth astonish me. I said, why? She said, they're so strong and there's, there's no decay. She said, one child has a little decay, but she said, I can see it's where the food gets caught. But she said, the teeth are so strong that decay has arrested. Whew, I didn't give them sugar. And I remember we were in, the, in a big shopping mall one day and I had my six children there. And, and it must have been near Christmas because Santa Claus and all his helpers were there giving out candies to kids. And they tried to give them to my kids and my kids just shook their heads. <laughs> and they'd never seen this. So they looked at me and they said, huh? And I said, oh, they're allergic. The fact is, every kid is allergic. <laughs> and Sandra and his helpers went, oh. And my children went, oh. <laughs> Walked away having a little grin. See, my children were so well fed, they had no desire for such things. And yes, I did talk to them time, for time to time about what the sugar does. <laughs> Choose your heart. Have you, heard the, have you heard the poem, Choose Your Heart? Marriage is hard, divorce is hard, choose your heart. Saving every cent is hard, being in debt is hard, choose your heart. Spending a bit of extra time so that you make your children's food and not giving them sugar, sometimes that might be hard. But I tell you what, it's hard when the children's tooth 
Teeth are rotting before even the second teeth come through and I have seen that. That's hard. That's hard for the child. They can't smile. They look pretty atrocious when they smile because they've got these little black stumps in their mouth. One mother told me that they want to put her child under general anaesthetic and pull the teeth out because they're all rotting. Yeah, that's hard. Choose your heart. <laughs> I choose my heart, but I thought it ended up being the easy way. So what else leaches minerals out? Caffeine. Now, if you're a coffee drinker, please don't stop or you won't be able to come tomorrow night. <laughs> I'm going to tell you the truth. That caffeine, oh, look, the sun's shining on it just at the right time. <laughs> it's a deception. <laughs> To take a cup of coffee is, to get a lift is like taking out a loan to pay off your loan. Eventually there's nothing left. People say to me, do you drink coffee, Barbara? I say, no, I'll just watch the people suffer. Day one, <laughs> Misty Mountain Health Retreat. And more people suffer from caffeine withdrawals at our health retreat than any other withdrawal. We have people come off methamphetamines. We have people come off, uh, we even had a lady with a champagne, a champagne alcoholic. We have people come off cigarettes, marijuana, heroin. No one suffers like the coffee drinker. I'm talking about short term. They get over it quicker. In fact, usually within 45, 48 hours, the, the headache is clearing. And often as they come out of that haze of bad headaches, they start to realise, ah, th this, this stuff is hurting them. So why do they get so many, so badly headaches? Because the quick rise that a person gets is actually mimicking a crisis in the body. And that crisis, when it happens, the neurotransmitters in the brain adjust, thinking there's a crisis coming, but actually no crisis does come. And so there's this constant adaptation and adjustment to what the caffeine does. If you are a coffee drinker and you're having three cups a day, start having three half cups a day, then go to three third of a cup a day, then go to three quarter of a cup a day and often within a week you can be off without pain and suffering because the fact is it, it disrupts the neurotransmitters in the brain. Do you know what that means? That you can have a couple, both having a couple of cups of coffee a day, they can give birth to a baby that has a tendency to attention deficit syndrome, hyperactivity because of the parent's caffeine habits, even autism. And they don't tell you that on the coffee packet, do they? But what else is happening is that caffeine, because it has an acid effect in the body, it leaches minerals out of the bones, and that's your biggest storage house. How many people have osteoporosis in their 50s and 60s? And it should not be. When I tripped, well, I trod on a a rock that was slippery and my whole body went out and crashed down on my arm and totally broken. The radius was out of place. Yes, I did go to emergency. Yes, and I'm thankful for the orthopaedic surgeon whose school pulled it back into place. And I'm very thankful for the painkilling medication so I didn't feel it. That was one day. So at four weeks when they x-rayed it, they were surprised that it had healed so well. Well, I'd been applying, you see, I cut half the plaster off and I applied comfrey every day. It's got a growth stimulant in it. And the, and the nurse was surprised that the bones were knitting so well, but they wanted me to keep the plaster on for another two weeks. He said, do you have osteoporosis? I said, no. He said, have you had a test? I said, no. <laughs> and, I re and he started laughing. I realized that must sound very silly. How do I know I don't have osteoporosis? I don't do anything that leaches minerals out of my body. I had a high mineral diet. I make sure as much as possible they're organic. And if, my, if I slipped and my whole body went up in the air and slammed down on my wrist 
And I had osteoporosis, I think I would have broken more than that radius. <laughs> That's my theory. You see, your body will talk to you. Some people say, how often do you have blood tests? I'll say, never. I don't even know what my blood is. Why don't I have a blood test? Well, why? Everything works. <laughs> and I've had people say to me, Barbara, what can I do for my high cortisol levels? I said, how do you know they're high? Well, the blood tests say. I said, you know, I could be wrong. Do you know the best thing that you read is your body? That's what you read. And if it's not working well, Sustain Me will show you what you can do to bring some adjustments and healing back in the body. I'm so glad it's that simple. I'm so thankful to God that it is that simple. So caffeine not only leaches minerals out, caffeine can also cause damage. Oh, the sun comes just where I need it. <laughs> Thank you, Father in heaven. The... the um, Caffeine also damages the DNA for the neurotransmitters. Sugar, it not only meets minerals, but it also can damage the DNA for your pancreas. How often are we seeing children today? When I was young, you never heard of a child with diabetes. And how often do we hear of children with diabetes today? They haven't been on the planet long enough or eaten sugar long enough to damage their pancreas. They've been born with a weakened pancreatic gene because of the parents' sugar habits. What also damages the DNA is, is tobacco. <laughs> I was listening to a presentation by Professor Walter Weith. And he was showing that children are being born today with holes in the honeycomb shape around their alveoli in their lungs, born to smoking parents. He also showed that children born to smoking parents have less alveoli in their lungs. He also showed that children can develop emphysema, well not actually the children, but by the time they're even in their 30s and never having smoked. So tobacco not only leaches the minerals because it's a high acid, but it also damages the DNA. Alcohol, we get children born today with fetal alcohol syndrome. Eee! Born to parents that have two drinks a week. And often children born with fetal alcohol syndrome, it's not picked up. They they're almost considered that they're, they're not the bright, what are this, we're not the sharpest knife in the drawer, is that what we say? There's, they're just not, they're, they're not as severely damaged as, as um, you know, children that are, have Down syndrome, something like that. They're not, it's not often picked up. Often they're the children who behave you're not great, but it's fetal alcohol syndrome. Looking at what damages the DNA, chemicals. And the biggest chemical company in the world is the pharmaceutical company. Drugs never cure disease, they just change the form and location. Every drug <coughs> has a side effect. First of all, seriously look at what's what you're washing your clothes with, what is in your personal care product, what's in the food you're eating. Seriously look at the ingredients in your washing detergent. Seriously have a look at what you're cleaning your bathroom with. Because little by little, like the dripping tap on a stone, it's weakening the body as putting chemicals in. Also damaging DNA. Have you heard of the thalidomide tragedy? My husband is, he was born in 1957, and when his mother was pregnant, she had morning sickness, and she was offered thalidomide, which she refused. But many women who took that thalidomide, they gave birth to babies with no arms. Have you heard that? Mm. Drugs never cure disease. They just change the form and location. They have an effect. They're chemicals. 
and the pharmaceutical company makes billions out of this. They made billions recently, still are, out of a certain vaccine. And I do know that many people were blackmailed into taking this. So I put not your trust in princes, neither in the Son of Man, in whom there is no help. It doesn't mean you don't go sometimes. I went when my wrist was broken. It, it was a very strange looking wrist and it was so painful. I knew this was a bit, I needed more than a poultice for this one. <laughs> but that was one day. In fact, that's the first broken bone I've ever had. <laughs> but you know what else happened when I was sitting in emergency for six hours? Why was I sitting in emergency for six hours? because the whole system was chocked up with people that don't know how to look after their bodies. People would come in, oh, I spilt gravy on my hand. I thought, what? <laughs> we don't even know how to fix that. <laughs> my little girl's got a sore finger. <laughs> I feel sick. Have you had anything to drink today? Oh, I need two alcohol, I need two beers. <laughs> Do you know why that's happening? Because, because it's free. And I thought, they reckon we're an enlightened age. I think we're a dumb age. <laughs> eh? We don't even know how to look after the body. Isn't that the first step? The first step. And I sat there for six hours. I'm so glad I didn't know it was going to be six hours. <laughs> my husband eventually went and said, my wife's in a lot of pain. They said, she's in the fast track. Fast track? Six hours? <laughs> and I was confronted with the fact that we don't know how to look after our bodies anymore. And I was also confronted with the fact that now I know why I do what I do. That little book, The Ministry of Healing, said the only hope of better things is the education of people in the right principles. Principles that when you give the body the right conditions, they will heal. Only 5% can be attributed to genetics today. And why are the genes damaged? They're damaged because of mineral deficiency. They're damaged because of stimulants. They're damaged because of drugs. They're also damaged because of monosodium glutinate. Monosodium glutinate is, a, is, is basically a chemical and people put it into food because they're eating food that has no flavor and it's got no flavor because it's not organic. Did you know that one organic tomato will deliver nine times the iron of a conventionally grown tomato. Eey. Also, mould can come in and damage the DNA. There, there should be no mould in our house at all. Please check. You know, the Bible says if there's mould in the house, just uh, destroy the house. Well, settle down a minute. Yeah, we don't want to pull our houses down. First of all, find out why, because it shouldn't be there. Maybe you need to cut a few trees down. Maybe you need to, to fix the, the, uh, the drain pipe. May, just find out why it's there. Maybe you need to get a fan in your bathroom. Yes, yeah, the Bible says, <clears throat> first of all, clean out the house and shut it up, and if it grows back, maybe then destroy the house. First of all, you've got to find out why, because it's a toxic poison. My book, Self Heal by Design, is a book that shows the true role of microorganisms and disease. And in our next lecture, looking at <coughs> why cancer happens in the body and how we can turn it around, I'll be looking at that in a little bit more detail. The first step, if someone's ill, is to ascertain the cause. And sometimes the cause can be several things. But the first step is to eliminate anything that could possibly be contributing. My mother died at 51, a cripple in a wheelchair with rheumatoid arthritis. 
I have strong genes towards that, but you've probably noticed I'm way after 51. I'm not a cripple in a wheelchair and I'm not dead. I am so glad that though genetics loads the gun, it is lifestyle that pulls the trigger. And that goes right in line, in right, in line with God's method of healing and also God's government of freedom. Freedom is based on free choice. We even have the choice, even if it's in our genes. That's the good news.